Hey, good morning, family. So good to have you in church this morning. And I don't know where you are this morning, where in the world you are, but we are pumped about service today. And it's an incredible honor that we can share the day together. If you're new or visiting with us this morning, real big welcome to Sycamore Church. We always love to have new people with us. And this morning is going to be another incredible service. The team is right about set to lead us in worship. And I'm so expectant of all that God is going to do. We've been having some real special moments in church. Passion Night was a spark, super Saturday. And I really think God is using these moments to prepare us for the second half of the year. And so just lean in your heart wherever you are this morning, believing that God is going to do real special stuff. If you still need to invite someone to church, please do that. Share out the link. Tell somebody, get into church this morning. God is going to do something special in your life. We have contents for the kids as usual, and all the links are in the descriptions there on your YouTube channel, and so you can follow through and just set up for your kids, but it's just such a joy that we can have church together this morning. So we're right about set. Let's just get in and allow the team to lead us in some real prophetic, amazing worship. I have an encouraging word to share with you today, and I just believe that God is going to use it in a real special way. Once again, big welcome to church, and let's get right in all that God has this morning. And I, I, I don't need another reason why I will lift, lift my voice and shout out your praises. You are the greatest. Come on, with all you've got this morning, you're alive, you're awake, and you're aware. Would you join us as we praise God with all of our hearts and we bring worship to Him? Amen. I don't need another reason. I just think about my Jesus. I don't need to hide myself up. I just think about your love. Think about your love, your love, your love. Think about your love. Sing it out. I, I, I don't need another reason why I will lift, lift my voice. Shout out your praises. You are the greatest. Oh. Shout out your praises. You are the greatest. Just emotion. It's the power of your love, your love, your love. The power of your love, your love, your love. The power of your love. And I, I don't need another reason why I will lift, lift my voice, shout it up, shout out your praises. You are the greatest.
bring my best friends And I'm ready to give it all to you I bring my whole heart And I'm ready to pour it out on you I bring my energy and passion statement on your heart this morning yes, Jesus. you have it all God all of us you have God all of our lives all of our strength all my youth you have it all God my words my actions my praise you have it all God And at times, life hits me. It's hard. It gets very tough. Life isn't fair. But our, our statement to you today, God, is that we'll praise you nonetheless. In the highlands, in the heartaches, we'll praise you nonetheless, God. If 
the mountains where where you hide and oh how far I'd scale the valleys if you grace the other side and oh how long have I chased rivers from lowly seas to where they rise against the rush of grace descending from the source of its supply and in the highlands and the heartaches you're neither more nor less inclined I will search and stop at nothing yours is not that hard to fight <laughs> oh, I'll praise you on the mountains I'll praise you when the mountains in my way you're the summit where my feet are I'll praise you in the valleys all the same no less God within the shadows no less faithful when the night leads me astray you're the heaven where my heart is in the highlands and the heartaches all the same Your kindness extend the path from where your feet rest on the sunrise to where you sweep the sinners path. And oh, how far you come running, you have just to shadow me through the night. You trace my steps through all my. Walk me out the other side For who could dare ascend that mountain That valid hill called Calvary But for the one I call Good Shepherd Who like a lamb was slain for me Whoa.
mighty river flowing up from a deep and empty grave. I'll praise you on the mountains. I'll praise you when the mountains in my way. You're the summit where my feet are. I'll praise you in the valleys all the same. No less God within the shadow. No less faithful when the night leads me astray. You're the heaven where my heart is. In the highlands and the heartaches all the same. Yes, God. Whatever we walk through, wherever we are, whatever we face, we praise God. And if ever we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, God, we praise. thousands fall on our left and ten thousand on our right we praise however close sing it out I worship you in my joy and in my Joy and in my pain. 
sing his praise. Sing his praise again. Sing it one last time. Sing his praise again. I want to encourage you this morning, Psalm 47, from the first verse. I love this. It says, Come everyone, clap your hands. Shout to God with joyful praise. For the Lord Most High is awesome. He is the great King over all the earth. I love that. You know, as we sing His praise this morning, what a reminder this morning as we gather in church that our God is a great King over all the earth. We're not just singing the praise of some praise-hungry God somewhere. We are singing the praise of a praise-worthy God. And I don't know what your story is this morning as we gather. I don't know what the last six months of the year have been for you. I, I don't even know what this season of life is for you. But I just want to say even right where you are, you know God is praise-worthy. You know God has been better to you than you know. You know God has been better to you than you can ever give Him credit for. He has been good. And what a joy it is that this morning we can begin to sing. And I love some of the songs we sang this morning. Whether you're on a high this morning or or you're on a low this morning. I don't know what season of life you are or what's going on in your world, but our God is good and He is praiseworthy in Jesus' name. And that's our joy as we gather. Big welcome to everybody everywhere. We're going to lean into a time of prayer this morning. And that's such a reminder that our God is the great King over all the earth. And as we come with all kinds of requests this morning, as we come with all kinds of situations that, you know, people are even dealing with. And if you've gotten a sending prayer request through the week, that's awesome. But maybe you haven't. And there are things in your life this morning that you want people to be praying for you for. You want a family of faith to gather around. I want you to engage the comment section wherever you're following service. And let's know how we can pray for you. Let's know how we can stand with you. Listen, I believe that our God is the great King over all the earth. And that we can stand in faith with one another this morning. And believe that He's going to do miracles. Believe that He's going to do mighty things. I always love it week in, week out. Seeing all these prayer requests about, you know, families and loved ones. And people asking for salvation of souls. I love it. I still believe God does miracles and I'm believing for it right here and right now. I'm also believing that the second half of this year is going to be the better half for you. And we're going to pray about that this morning. Can we do that this morning? Everywhere we are gathered, can you join in your faith this morning? Can you lean in your heart as we pray? Father, we thank you that you are a good God, that you are the great King over all the earth. We thank you, Father, that you reign in the affairs of men. We thank you, Father, that we're not just some wandering people you know looking for a savior but we thank you that our God has conquered all we thank you that our Savior has earned all the victory and so we begin to speak your name father in situations this morning we begin to speak your name oh God in areas of need this morning we begin to speak your name oh God for loved ones God for family situations we speak your name this morning oh God you know people's health this morning that your name is the name that is above every other name and at the mention of your name name God every knee begins to bow and we thank you because there's victory in your name we thank you father because there is salvation in your name and so we claim it this morning for brothers for sisters everywhere oh God I just speak upon every one of those requests this morning and I begin to declare the grace of Jesus oh God to avail for your people and we thank you for it father we believe you this morning that heads are lifted up again oh God we believe you this morning oh God that souls are encouraged we believe you this morning, oh God, that the second half of this year is the better half for us. That, Lord, you will do great and mighty things. And we thank you for it, Father. Bless your church in our time. Strengthen church leaders. Encourage Christians everywhere. Lift up the heads of the downcast, oh God. And let the gospel shine. Let the light of the gospel shine. Let our times be a time of the greatest moves of God ever. And we believe you for it, Father. And we give you all the glory. And everybody everywhere, we you say a big amen 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 let it resound where you are this morning and come on let's worship one more time let's remember come on remember how our God has never failed has never failed us remember that his name will make a way you will make a way from the cross to the grave he is risen and he reigns praise the Lord Gather this morning. Remember, remember, remember our God. 
Amen. I feel like just saying this one, how are we going to end this year? News headline, we'll be singing his praise again and again. He is a faithful God through all seasons. In Jesus' name. Once again, big welcome to church. We love to gather as a family. We love to gather as a community of faith. Once again, if you're new or visiting us with us this morning, maybe maybe just got invited to church, maybe just came to check out what's happening around here. We are so glad that you're there on the other side of that screen. It's such a joy that we can be coming to you and sharing this moment. And I believe God sees you where you are. And of course, if you have the privilege in life of calling Sycamore Church home, it's one of those Sundays there where God does great and amazing things. In Jesus' name. We love to gather. We love to be together. Together. We love community as a church family, and God is doing incredible things. Amen. All right, I, there's been so much happening through the week, and you know, um, this season of church life, there's been super sad today, there's been passion night, and all these incredible things, and surge, and all that God is doing. We're on day four of surge there about now, and that's incredible. Now, um, um, we have a question of the day, and this is one of the things we do every time we gather. So, um, if you're new or visiting, we just like to hear ourselves out and know what's happening in your heart and in your world and, and what have you. And so, our question of the day is going to be for 60 seconds, and then you can engage in all the comment sections. We kind of get answers around here, and but of course, we love to hear you on the comment section um, where you are. So, this is our question of the day, right? It just arrived from our examiners and those who set it. Um, what would you love to have as a highlight in the second half of the year? What would you love to have as a highlight in the second half of the year? Maybe this is a moment to be audacious and prophetic, who knows? But what would you love to have as a highlight in the second half of the year? So your time starts now, and then um, let's, let me be getting um, answers around, around here. I, I kind of already you know you. Yeah, July, August, September, October, November, December. Now that I count nine months. <laughs> No, no, not that. I was thinking of the first one. That would be like a highlight. Like, kind of, I can't even just get it. What's wrong? What's the highlight you're looking for? May, June, July, August, September, October, November. My dear, oh my dear. <laughs> Okay, um, I think I think like 60 seconds is, I think that's like 60 seconds. Okay, lots of great answers around. Um, I'm sure everywhere we are gathered, I'm sure there are great answers happening everywhere. Um, so in just a moment, we're going to take um, praise reports of some of the great things God is doing in our church and people's lives, and we're going to come to our giving. But speaking about highlights, speaking about praise reports, um, top of my list is always my wife. She's amazing. She's the highlight of, you know, my whole life. But, you know, so, so I, get, I get many privileges in life. I get to call Jesus Savior. And of course, I get to call Debola my wife. And that's, um, that's like highlight. That's my praise report. But we're just going to link out. She's going to lead us in um, a praise report this morning and lead us in our giving. Baby, you're awesome. So let's just link out to that. And then um, she'll take over the service. Thank you so much, baby. You are amazing. I love you so much, right? Okay, back to service. We have praise reports in the house. Hey, church, how are you guys doing? It's been an amazing service so far. Our worship was on top of the roof, and um, so much more yet to come ahead. But then, let's get to praise reports this morning. God is doing so much amazing things with us as a church, and I have a few just to read and then to display on your screens. Um, we have great provision, someone's thanking of a restoration of health, successful completion of a project, Passion Night. Yeah, Passion Night was awesome. It was amazing. I could relieve events from there. Miraculous salvation of a friend. God's peace and restoration after a difficult phase. Someone is thanking God for restored relationship. Thank God for victory over addiction. I previously struggled with. Thank God. Thank God for so, so much things God is doing in our midst. And then we also had a wedding during the week. The Agons, Mr. and Mrs. Remy Agon got wedded this past week congrats again family our hearts and our thoughts are with you always the albums and many 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 other weddings coming up in the course of the year just stay tuned with us family will want to take time this morning to give 
And um, as a church, one of our core values is honor. And when we come around our giving, it's our statement to God saying, Lord, we honor you for who you are and all that you are to us. And so this morning, again, we are coming around this thing of honor to God with our tithe, which is our first 10% of all our earnings and in our offerings, with our generous giving over and above all that God has given to us in the course of the month or within a particular period. And so before we do, I would um, want to read a scripture to us. You know, um, this, exp this, this, this season has hit differently for, for different people in different ways. And um, I, I, I read somewhere, so someone was saying this week that if you went for an interview a couple of years ago and you were asked, um, what is your five-year plan? You probably didn't factor in COVID in that plan that you stated out. But then, you know, in spite of all the pandemic, the pandemic and all that, the, the impact has been for us as um, individuals, as a family, as people, um, I'm always encouraged to see the faithfulness of God's people even in this season, how that people are staying faithful in their generosity towards God and towards his house. And so I want to encourage you again this morning with a scripture from the book of Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. i read it out to you. It says, So let us not become tired of doing good. For if we do not give up, the time will come when we will reap the harvest I'll read it again. It says, So let us not become tired of doing good, for if we do not give up, the time will come when we will reap the harvest. You know, the, the, the language of faithfulness is consistency. It's showing up again. It's doing it daily. It's doing it over and over and over again. And this is what scripture is telling us, that God does not forget. You know, I feel like this morning in service, God is, is like what Jesus was in that temple where he sat down and he was seeing the woman, the widow, coming towards the altar again with her might, with that tiny thing that looked like him. But it was some faithfulness. And Jesus was looking at her and saying, I see your faithfulness. And I see God just, just uh, coming around us again this morning and saying, I see the faithfulness of my people and I'm not going to forget it. And I'm going to reward it. And so, family, again, how can I encourage us not to give up, not to relent, not to get tired in well-doing? Because if we do not give up, the secret is faithfulness, staying faithful, faithful, faithfully believing and giving and putting our hands to all that God is doing. God is a rewarder. God will give life to our seed and give increase to our harvest in Jesus' name. Can we take a moment to just speak God's blessing over our giving again this morning? If you're with your family, please hold hands together. And if you're alone, God is with you there. Just come in and let us just pray together this morning. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the faithfulness of your people. Thank you for the generosity of your church. Thank you for the gift of church family. Thank you, Lord Jesus, because we know you are with us even in this season, O oh Lord. And it's such an encouragement for our hearts to know that you don't forget, that you see, that you give life to seeds. And so, Lord, we speak your blessing over everyone that is bringing an offering, a, a, a tithe, that's just given to you again this morning. And we speak, O oh Lord, fruitfulness upon their lives in Jesus' name. We speak your favor upon their lives in the name of Jesus. Lord, we believe and we speak, O oh Lord, grace upon this season for us. And we declare that as a church family, we'll come through this season strong and whole in the name of Jesus. Lord, be gracious to us again and show us your favor. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen and amen. Okay, so we'll take 90 seconds to give. Details of this of our giving to be on your screens shortly. And after that, we have something interesting for our media team. Enjoy the rest of service.
Hello family, welcome to church. So quick question, has the past week not been so intense, like amazingly intense? Starting with Super Saturday, last week Saturday, which was such a refreshing time when we came together as a family all over the world to lean in our hearts in prayer. Media Focus service was such a beautiful one. We got the privilege of listening to the message, Gang Chilling. Do you know that God's word is not just isolated and it just comes and dwells in there? It abides with the gang. Gangs roll together. Do you know that as you put God's word in your life, do you know that transformation? Do you know that peace? Do you know that that strength that only God can give is following through in the conversation? Do you know that change, change and transformation is always just waiting on an atmosphere of prayer? And as prayer is stepping into the conversation, transformation is stepping into the conversation. Prayer will, will, will come as a ringleader and be telling transformation. Meet me for to lose life. Come meet me there. I did there. Prayer did there. I say, pr prayer go say I don't show transformation. Come meet me here. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> I love this. It was such a timely and perspective-defining message that would definitely prepare us for the second half of this year. And Passion Night, wow. You know, Passion Night was electric. It was one of those heartfelt. God is here moment. We are so grateful for, for, for Passion Night and when all that God did in that service and says, yes, all that God out, is still going to do through that when service. You it's going to burn you and there will be nothing left of you. God says no, it's coming to burn you up into a new season of your life. It's coming to burn up a passion you never had. It's coming to burn up a... And on top of all these, we are on surge. We spend the last five days refocusing our hearts on core things like loyalty, consistency, and many others, things that are very vital to our God journey. We have two more days to go, and I encourage you to stay deliberate in engaging all the meditations. And if you haven't been on Surge, you can still catch up on all the meditations on our website at sycamore.church slash resources slash devotionals. There you can find all the meditations starting from day one. You know, in, in, in all of this, maybe what I'm most grateful for is that we can relive these moments over and over again. We have the Super Saturday Prayer Guide available on the website at sycamore.church slash resources. You can go there, download it, and spend an hour praying those profound prayers over and over again. Passion Night is right on YouTube. You can go in and watch it and just let it minister to you in new and fresh ways. And the message Gang Chilling is available on our website at sycamore.church slash messages. You can download it, you can listen to it, or you can watch it. Isn't that amazing? I encourage you to take all of these and go over them again and again and again. Okay, as we trust God to prepare our hearts for all that he has for us in this second half of the year. Now looking forward, this Thursday by 7 p.m. on all our platforms, we're going to be having Surge Prayer Hangout. It's 30 minutes when we come together to pray and consolidate on this media season that we've been in. So please make sure you're there. We look forward to seeing you. One last thing, our chat rooms are open and they are for three sets of people. First, if you're new in our church, maybe this is your first time or maybe you've been coming for a while but you're new, we would like to know you and welcome you. So please join us in our chat room right after this service. Second, if you feel that you need someone to pray with you, please just join in our chat room and we'll have someone assigned to pray with you in a closed room. And third, if you're not in a live group in our church and you like to engage with family, connect, you know, talk around today's sermon, talk around how you can find the sermon applicable in your life, then go to that chat room. We'll assign you to a group where you can do all of this. So, Please, if you are in any of these three categories, right after the service, the links will be up. It's in the description already. Just click in, go in on Zoom, and let's meet you. Let's connect with you. It's been so good being with you. Um, let's get right back into the service. 
We're going to take another moment to worship as we make our hearts ready for God's word. in 
Your grace holds us now, God. We're grateful for this. Thank you that we can sing those beautiful words this morning, that we are held by your grace. Even in a time like this and all that's happening in the world and all the situations everywhere, thank you, Lord, that we are held by your grace. And this morning, we just come opening out our hearts again as we gather, believing, Lord, for a word of your grace. Believing, oh God, that you'd speak a word that is so simple that we would understand, but it's so profound that it will make it mark in our lives forever. Do something incredible this morning that would really propel us for all that you're bringing us into. And we thank you for it. Thank you for the joy of our community and the privilege of our gathering together this morning. Thank you so much, God, for all the incredible things that you do and that you're doing yet again this morning. To you be all the glory. In Jesus' name. And everybody, everywhere you are, say a big amen. Amen, amen in Jesus' name. Hey, welcome to church once again. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks, team. Thank you for serving us so well this morning. And I believe worship was an incredible blessing to you um, everywhere you um, are this morning. And by the way, news headline, um, like you've probably heard already, um, Funnest Faith is coming out today. And um, we're excited about that everywhere. Okay. All right. So, so let's just get straight into God's word. I have something to share with you this morning that I hope is really going to encourage you and, you know, bless you this morning. Um, I'm essentially going to have a foundation in the book of Proverbs in chapter 14 and the fourth verse. And um, I'm just going to be going somewhere, um, I hope, interesting this morning. Um, so um, Proverbs 14 and verse 4 says these words that where no oxen are, the trough is clean, but much increase comes by the strength of an ox. So, so this morning, I just want to speak to you for, for a few moments of what I would call run on the animal shit. Run on the animal shit. Help me look at somebody around you if you're in a room, if you have your spouse around or a family member or anybody anywhere and say those encouraging words this morning. Encourage the brother or the sister in the Lord and say run on the animal shit. Say that, come on, everywhere you are. Run on the animal, animal shit. So, so the Bible says those interesting words that much increase comes by the strength of an ox. I was wondering, you know, I'm thinking this morning about how that, and maybe you have been in these situations where you relate with something, um, 
by the headlines, and then you find out that there's like an entire package that you are not aware of. Um, have you ever been in one of those situations before where the headline was so catchy, but you didn't really, you know, get to know what the whole package behind the headline was? So you went for the headline, and then the package came with all its weight. So, for example, maybe you won a promo car, and you were just so excited about winning that promo car um, until you realized that they are going to start putting your picture on every billboard everywhere, but using your face, you know, you are losing your integrity, you are losing everything about your life because you want to have this small, you know, car that they dashed you um, and, and all of that. Then everywhere you're driving around, you have to drive with their brand and, you know, and all of that. Then you thought, like, can you just come and take your car? What's, what's there? Or maybe you even just won, like, maybe 100K. Like, you know, you were excited about winning it. And then by the time they started putting you in front of all the national dailies, everybody, people that haven't spoken to you for the last five years, started calling you, bro, how far you don't hammer? Come, come settle your guys. So, okay. And then you start realizing that the, the amount you're using to settle people is even more than what you want, you know, in, in the whole promoting, right? Um, or maybe it's, maybe it's even just things like, you know, you, you want to be a lawyer. So you are like a young child, and while you are young, and, you know, you just used to watch these fancy movies that sort of just start up, objection, my lord. And you say, whoa, I want to be a lawyer, man. <laughs> but you didn't know the whole package, you know, and stuff like that. And then um, here you are now, you know, learning fashion design and stuff. <laughs> anyway, but, but or maybe it's even just the whole school concept. Maybe for you, it's, um, you know, you, when you are younger, you know, one day you're, maybe your parents were not feeling well, and you are like seven years old, and then you are like caring, like, oh, dad, are you fine? They say, ah, you are going to the doctor and you also heard that as a prophecy here you are now 40 years of medical school you know drinking all manner of substances to stay awake <laughs> cursing people that misled you in life and stuff like that but um but that's the thing sometimes the headline just looks fancy like just looks like you know beautiful and then when we start to lean into the package it looks um a little more than, than, than that or maybe for you it's even maybe it's even something like marriage you know there you are years ago every time you're on instagram on twitter then every comment is god when god when god when now <laughs> Now you are three years in marriage. You're saying, God, how long would this last? <laughs> you know, um, on the other side of it, right? Um, or maybe, maybe for you, it's a job. I'm just talking about these things that, you know, the, the package or the headline looks really attractive, but maybe the package is not exactly that. Maybe for you, it's a job um, that you're working. Before you started it, you know, you were head over heels about it. Now, you know, um, you're just realizing... Um, that there's more to this. Or maybe, maybe it's, it's one of the ones that I think is a little more common these days. It's like, you're just, uh, you know, because you spend a lot of time on YouTube now and stuff like that. Then you just see like this ad. Do you know in three weeks you can lose 10 kg? And you're like, oh, yes, I want to. And then you sign up and you start. After like two days with the body pain, they didn't tell you about all of that, you know. And you're like, what's gone? It's wait a qualification to make everyone, you know, you're just realizing that you really don't care, right? Um, so the, 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 the point is that there's a lot we can point to in just that sense of we can catch the headline and love the headline, um, but the package comes with um, a little more weight. And, and that's what I think Proverbs, 24, Proverbs 14 verse 4, which we read, is kind of showing us that, you know, on the one hand, it says where there is no oxen, the trough is clean. And so if you're the kind of person who says, you know what, I want to have a clean trough, I don't want all these mess ups that come with having an ox, you know, I, I have an ox and then I'm having to watch the ox, you know, shit and, you know, just mess up and clean up every day and all of that. So it says, you know what, you can make that choice to say, I don't even want to have oxen and then you have a clean trough and that's cool. You know, you wake up every day, no stress on you and all of that. But it says, but on the other hand, you can choose to have the oxen. And then it says, do you know that much strength comes, much increase comes by the strength of the oxen? And so on the other hand, we can say we're going to be dealing with all these, you know, the entire package and all the weight of the package and all of that. But we see that there is actually a beautiful headline of the much increase, okay? So there's like a beautiful headline of the so much increase that comes through the strength um, of the oxen. And so um, I think this morning, the question we're going to be asking ourselves is what do we choose do we choose to have a clean trough or do we choose to have increase do we choose to have you know our lives convenient and clean and you know no stress and all of that like I, I just don't want all that pocket package stuff you know all the things that kind of come with the package do I choose that or do I choose this morning that I want the increase that comes from from the from the oxygen and, but when I think about it I think quite honestly it's a clear choice it's a clear choice for me about the Christian life you know I think in the Christian life this is a clear choice the, that the Christian life is not a feel-good life. It's not, we're not called to like a, you know, just to feel good, convenience kind of life. It's not a stroll in the park kind of life. 
Um, I think, in fact, when we even speak about words like grace, we need to always remind ourselves that grace in itself is not a call to laziness. Grace is not a call to a life where not, you know, an absence of responsibility and what have you. You remember the words of Paul in 1 Corinthians 15 and, and the 10th verse. And Paul says, look, I'm what I am by the grace of God. And you hear those words and you're like, oh, I mean, grace is just doing everything, you know. Have you met one of those guys before that? He said, man, how did you pass? <laughs> it's just great. How did you? <laughs> it's just great. And you're just thinking like grace just does everything. But, but look at Paul's words. He says, yet I labored much more, right? I labored more abundantly than they all. And then he says again, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. In other words, grace becomes an empowerment for us to do the work, for us to take responsibility. Grace, it becomes an empowerment. Grace is not an accomplice for laziness. Grace is an empowerment for responsibility that God brings us. So, so in the Christian life, I think the choice is going to be clear. That we're actually going to be choosing that life of the oxen, you know, where, where there is all the mess ups and all, but there is great increase. And think about all that that increase is going to look like in your context. You know, I, I think I must really encourage us again this morning that we must refuse to settle for less than the call and the purpose of God for our lives. We must refuse to, to, to you know, settle for, you know, just this life that doesn't take up the, the toughness that comes with what it means to be a follower of Jesus. That sense of responsibility and, you know, just always trying to hide away and, you know, sneak away and, you know, just want to have life convenient and all of that. I think what it means to be a follower of Jesus is to step into the front lines of a call and a purpose of God. And the truth is sometimes it gets tough. Sometimes it's like you have all the mess ups in your trough and all of that, but there is great increase. There's the purpose of God. There's the higher calling. There's the life that God calls us to that happens in that place of a messed up trough, all right? And so um, this morning, I'm, I'm, I'm asking you, would you be willing or would we be willing to fight to do what it takes to build godly marriages, to build godly homes, in, even in a day and age like this? Would we would be willing to, to be responsible leaders, to hold out values and integrity and pay the hard prices and whatever it looks like in your context, even in a dark world? Are we just going to chicken out and blend, you know, and all of that and miss the increase that comes from that life of dealing with the oxen? And I pray this morning that, you know, wherever you are on your journey, I pray this morning that you're not discouraged by the mess ups in your trough. I'm praying this morning that you're not discouraged by the weight of what it means to be a follower of Jesus. I'm praying this morning that you're not overwhelmed by, by you know, the things that seem to come in the package. Because on the headlines, it's, it's real fancy stuff and you love the story of the increase. But now you're dealing with like the oxen and the animal shit and all of that in your trough. And I pray this morning that you're not discouraged by, by what that looks like um, in your own context. And that you're not just going to, you know, sell out in a pursuit of the plan of God over your life. And I pray this morning that even your sense of value is not messed up. That suddenly you're starting to talk so much about, you know, the animal mess ups and you're forgetting that, come on, here you are talking about the animal mess ups. But do you remember that this is the story of increase that you're walking in? And I think about how, you know, the things that bring so much value into our lives and things that, you know, talk about gathering as a community of believers, talk about investments that God sets up for us. And then suddenly we start changing the narrative to talk about the mess ups of the oxen and the trough. Whereas God is saying, do you realize that it is those oxen and the strength of those oxen that has brought you great increase? And so I'm just really hoping this morning that the devil doesn't mess up our sense of value. And maybe this morning you are actually dealing with real human feelings. And I'm going somewhere this morning. I, I just want to show you something real powerful that I hope would really, you know, set the tone for, for the next half of the year that we're stepping into. All right. And so maybe you're dealing with human feelings this morning, like real feelings. Maybe you just feel like quitting, um, you know, or settling for less in any regard this morning. Maybe you look at the rest of this year and you're looking at it with lowered expectations um, because of, you know, some of the things that have happened so far and some of the things you're dealing with and, and all of that. Maybe you just, you're, you're just lowered your expectation and trying to settle in for, for the convenient spaces. And I was thinking today about how some of the real things that, that some of God's finest servants through the generations have had to deal with in landing the package of God's purpose over their lives. You know, you can want to call it ox shit in their troughs, but God's finest through the Bible and through all generations have always had to deal with real things, real life. And that there are battles that have to be fought to be called a champion. Um, that it isn't just, that Christians fight real battles. That, you know, we, we hear words like spiritual warfare. And, and friends, this is real. 
that Christians fight real battles. This is spiritual warfare, people. And we live in this. And when you hear that word, I, and you hear things like spiritual warfare, I hope that, you know, it's not just what your, your, your African mind tells you about, you know, um, things flying in the night and all of that. I think sometimes spiritual warfare is even more about things flying in your mind than, than things flying anywhere in the night. Sometimes it's battles that you're facing on the inside. And these are the battles that produce the champions. And I still believe that there are victories to be won this year. I still believe that as all that God is doing around us, and there has been such a spark, and, you know, all that God has been walking us through as a church community over the last couple of, you know, weeks in this media phase. And, you know, oh, amazing, Super Saturday was incredible, and Passion Night was, whoa, was a spark, and praise God for Surge, and all that is happening, and media focus service, and all that God is doing in this prayer. And I believe that God is using it strategically to position us for something, for victories that he's bringing us into. And so as we talk about this, there are three major things. This is where I'm kind of going. The three major things that I think we we'll need to win. We need to battle and win. Three major spaces that I want to talk about that we need to battle and win in a time like this. And so um, I'll just walk around a few Bible characters, but um, I hope that at the end of this, you would really feel encouraged and you would feel a spark that only the Holy Spirit can give you. And so the first thing I want to talk about this morning is what I call discouragement. That this is going to be a real battle on your journey. This is going to be, you know, something happening in your trough. This is going to be like some mess ups from, 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 from the life that you are walking, from standing on the front lines. A discouragement is real, people. Discouragement is real. That discouragement can weigh heavy on our souls. Sometimes it can just kill our will to go on. And that sense of God will do more. You just find yourself dropping out because you are discouraged within your soul. I feel like discouragement can clog your wheels. That your wheels start to get heavier and heavier on every turn and it, it's like a weight that you start to carry. I feel like discouragement is real and it doesn't matter what you cover it up with, you know, whether you just say, oh, I'm just in a period of my life, I'm just, whatever fancy lines you use to cover it, discouragement is real. And this morning, I think it's one of the battles that we have to fight to say that there's a victory that we must be gaining over discouragement. And so in First Samuel and the 30th chapter, and you, you, you probably know this amazing story about David and let me just pick it in from the first verse. The Bible says, when David and his men came to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag and they had burned it with fire. And in verse 3, it says they are taking captive the women and all who were there from small to great. They didn't kill anybody, but they carried every one of them away. And in verse 3, the Bible says, David and his men came to the city and there it was, it was burned with fire and their wives, their sons and their daughters had been taken captive. What does that feel like, friends? And in verse 4, the Bible says, David and the people who were with him, they lifted up their voices and wept. Now watch this. The Bible says they wept until they had no more power to weep. Have you gotten to those kind of places before? Have you, been, have you been discouraged before that? They wept till they had no more power to win. I mean, David is a guy's guy. David, is, David and his men, these were strong men, warriors, fighters, mighty men in, in, in battle. And the Bible says they wept until they had no more power to weep. And then it even gets worse. The Bible says in verse 6 that David was greatly distressed for the people spoke of stoning him because, of the, so because the soul of all people, of all the people was grieved. Every man for his sons and his daughters. And look at how bad it gets if you are David, if you are in David's shoes. And think about all that's going on. And it's bad enough for you. You've lost your own wives and all of that. And everybody, everything is taken away and it's burned with fire. And now your very own men are talking about stoning you. How bad does it get? But the Bible says these profound words. That David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. I love that, people. But David strengthened himself in the Lord. He's God. And can I encourage you this morning? Maybe you're dealing with discouragement of some form or the other. Maybe you suffered loss. Maybe things have been taken away from you. Maybe you lost an opportunity. Maybe you failed somewhere. But something in your soul is ringing a voice of discouragement. Can I encourage you this morning with those words? David strengthened himself in the Lord. He's God. Can I remind you that there is still strength in God? Can I remind you that there is still a future in your God? Can I remind you that he's still knows the plans that he thinks towards you and they are plans of good and not of evil he still has a future for your life he still has a call upon your life he is still doing more than you know god is still able to bring beauty out of ashes he's able to take that heartbreak and the and the disappointment and all that was loud that let you down and the brokenness and he's still able to tell an amazing story out of it now here's where he gets now look at verse 8 the bible says in verse 8 that david then began to say to god as he strengthened himself he began to say to god god shall i pursue 
this troop? Shall I overtake them? Look at this. And God answered, pursue, for you shall surely overtake them and without fail recover all. I love those words. Look at one moment. David is weeping till he has no power to weep again. People are talking of stoning him. David could have sat down there depressed and lose his life in a moment. David could have sat down there and said everything is just bad and sad and mad and there's no reason to be glad and I'm just frustrated. David could have sat down there and all that pain. But in just one verse, look at how everything changes. One verse where David says, I will strengthen myself in the Lord. Suddenly there's a word from God where God is saying, pursue, you will recover all. I'm saying to you people, there is still hope in your future. There is still more that God can do in the last half of the year. There is still more to recover. There are still victories to win. And I pray this morning, you will not give your heart to discouragement. Maybe you're dealing with it right now. Maybe it's a real battle for you right now. I pray this morning that you would strengthen yourself in God. You would wake up and put that spark back that only the Holy Spirit can give. I pray this morning that you'll be leaning on God, not leaning on anxiety, not leaning on worry, not leaning on what went wrong, but you will be leaning on God this morning and strengthen yourself in the Lord. I pray that those words will be said about you, that you strengthen yourself in the Lord your God. That's just my first step this morning. Second thing I want to talk about this morning that I think we are really going to deal with and we have to confront is the word disconnection. So on one hand, sometimes the devil will try to use discouragement to pull us out and make us settle for less. Second thing this morning that I think many of us are going to deal with is what I call disconnection. And, and, and disconnection is just that sense of I'm alone. That sense that the devil tries to throw at you and you feel I've been trying and disconnection will ultimately lead you to discouragement because you start to feel I'm alone, I'm the only one. And, and in 1 Kings and chapter 19, this was where Elijah found himself. Elijah was an amazing man, great man of God. Elijah was your guy that you know in the days when nobody made suya elijah was your guy who did suya in the old days elijah was your guy who didn't do suya with cows and stuff he did suya with human beings for fun that you annoy elijah you turn to suya that's and the fire is not from under it's from on top elijah is that guy fire is coming down from heaven before you know it elijah was your bad guy man but when we start to see elijah struggling it's i i don't get it's just crazy to me that Jezebel will send a message to Elijah. Elijah is running for his life. He's panicking. He's struggling. Elijah, why? Why would you ever be in those shoes? I mean, you, 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 you move power, Elijah. You do those kind of stuff. And look at this. In 1 Kings chapter 19, the ninth verse, the Bible says Elijah went into a cave. And he spent the night in a cave. He's caved in now. And the word of God came to him. Look at what God is asking him. What are you doing here, Elijah? This is not you, Elijah. Why are you locked out and zoned in? Why are you like this, Elijah? And he said, I've been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant. They have torn down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. Now look at this. I alone am left. And they want to take my life. So I'm hiding in a cave. Again, in verse 13, the Bible says that a voice came to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He repeats the same thing. I've been zealous for the Lord and the children of Israel have done all of that and I'm alone and they want to take my life. God says, no, go your way. Now look at verse, let me just fly you straight to verse 18. God is saying to Elijah, look, I have reserved 7,000 in Israel. All whose knees have not bowed to bow and every mouth that has not kissed him. And how would you feel if you were Elijah hearing those words? Because here you are, you've been doing solo guy, that in fact I'm the only one, I'm the only one that is standing, I'm the only one in this generation that is not selling out, I'm the only one in my office that is not losing my integrity, I'm the only one that is still trying to keep right values. Everybody, everybody is doing it. Everybody has. And then God says, look, I've reserved for myself 7,000. How would you feel if you were Elijah? I think Elijah will suddenly realize that maybe after all I should have joined a life group. What would Elijah have done if he had 10 people around? He just needed 10. He didn't need 7,000. He just needed to know I'm not alone in this. Maybe Elijah would have been attending connect meetings. Maybe Elijah would have. What would he have done to Elijah? Not running into that cave, but running to his company. What would he have done for Elijah? Now Elijah is losing his life. Do you know this is where Elijah lost everything? Because he caved in in that word, I am alone. And I just want to say to you people, you are not alone. And that we must fight off that sense of disconnection. I always like to tell people your relationship with God is personal, but it is not private. Don't believe that lie that it is just between me and God. It doesn't matter. to It's just between me and God. No, God sets the solitary family. God brings you and connects you with others. And you need to fight this battle on your journey. And the Bible says that Elijah caved in. What would Elijah have done if he just, if he just knew a couple of the other guys? He didn't even need 7,000. 
But here's what God is always trying to show you. That God has an abundance even where what you need is just one or two or three. God is trying to show you, look, there's more than enough the day you open your heart for it. Okay, third thing I'll say this morning, I'm pressed for time. Let me try and see how I can move this. So I've said discouragement, I've said disconnection. Third thing this morning is distraction. And distraction is like a major thing because um, distraction can so mess you up on your journey that you can be winning, but winning a wrong race. A distraction can so mess you up on your journey that you can be fighting battles and claiming victories, but wrong battles. And I think this morning that as I think about the story of Nehemiah, I see one of the greatest lessons about distraction in scripture. That Nehemiah is this guy with this call of God and he's going to build a wall and there's this sense of purpose upon his life and he says we're going to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem and then there is this Sambalat and Tobiah guys that start to raise a voice against, against Nehemiah. And, and, I, and as I was re- thinking about this today, I was thinking about how these voices still ring against us in this generation. And I'll show you what I'm saying that as you want to build, as you, as you want to do something with your life, there are people that want to build a marriage, want to build a career, you don't want to build things for God, build you know raising your home build and and do great things for God and suddenly there are these voices of Tobiah and Sambalat that just try to take you off your course and so in Nehemiah chapter 2 and verse 10 the Bible says that in 2 verse 19 the Bible says when Sambalat and Tobiah when they heard about it about what Elijah was doing the Bible says they laughed at us and despised us and they said what is this thing that you're doing have you felt like that this morning that maybe you were just trying to do things right and there's this generational voice that says what are you doing and that laughs at you and, and just scorns you and ridicules you and in chapter 4 and verse 1 again the bible says when somebody heard that they were rebuilding the wall he was furious and indignant and he mocked them again i think we deal with this in this day and age that every time you're trying to put a right foot forward there are just these voices that you deal with in chapter 6 from verse 1, the Bible says it happened when Sambalat, Tobiah, and, and the rest of our enemies heard that I had rebuilt the wall. So now Nehemiah is fighting on and doing all of this. And the Bible says in verse 2 that Sambalat, they sent to him and said, come, let us meet together among the villages in the plain of honor. But they thought to do me harm. Now, verse 3 and 4 is where I'm going. So Nehemiah says, I sent messengers to them saying, I am doing a great work so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease while I leave it and go down to you? And then they sent me this message four times, and I answered them in the same manner. And I was just thinking about this this morning. I'm praying that this will be our response, that we would see that we are doing a great work, that we can't allow these distractions of a generation to tell us, come down from what you're doing and come and be in these conversations that we have no business in. Come down from what you're doing and come and start to explain to the world a conviction that only God can give. Come down from what you're doing and come and start to reason with people that don't even know the first or last about God. And Nehemiah said, look, I am doing a great work. I cannot come down. There is something I believe. There is a pursuit that I've set my life on i cannot come down on that and the bible says they kept sending this message he kept replying the same way they kept sending that message in the emergency i've said this two times and they're still saying nehemiah kept giving the same response because of a deep conviction that he had about what he was doing and i pray this morning that in this battle against distraction we would rediscover our attraction in this battle against distraction we would rediscover what our lives are really about and this pursuit of god and of vision that is upon us that nothing about the voices or the ridicule of sambalad and tobiah will ever be enough to to take us off the way i pray this morning that nothing will be strong enough to distract you failure will not be strong enough to distract you success will not be strong enough to distract you nothing about what you meet on your journey will be strong enough to distract you but as i start to try and close this out i'm I'm actually going somewhere this morning and um let me just start trying to land if you would come on so that um there's this verse in judges 8 and verse 4 that i that was strong on my heart that i wanted to try and encourage you about you probably know this i i love it a lot and it says um that when gideon came to the jordan he and the 300 men who were with him, they crossed over. But now these are the words, exhausted, but still in pursuit. And today what I want to do really in laying this whole foundation is that I just want to come and encourage you to fight for what's still ahead of you. I want to encourage people this morning who may be tired, people this morning who feel discouraged, people who feel disconnected, people who even feel distracted. I want to encourage you this morning to fight, to press for what's still ahead of you. 
Let me read Judges 8 verse 4 to you in the Message Bible. It says, Gideon and his 300 men arrived at the Jordan and crossed over. Look at this. They were born tired, but still pressing the pursuit. I love that. They were born tired, but still pressing the pursuit. And today, I just want to challenge a fresh faith in you. Maybe you really feel tired because, because when you're dealing with a trough, when, when you have animals, when you have oxen, and there's all these mess-ups and all of that, the truth is it can be tiring. The truth is it can... Sometimes you just ask yourself, what kind of life did I sign up for? Why do I have to have all these oxen? Why do I have to deal with battles that discourage me? Why can't I just be like the world? And maybe you really feel tired this morning. And tiredness can be real. I think tiredness is a real human feeling. Tiredness can be real in different ways. Maybe this morning you are tired. Maybe you are emotionally tired. Maybe you are tired of trying. Maybe you are tired of in, in a struggle in your health. Maybe, maybe you feel tired in your marriage. Maybe you feel tired of singleness. Maybe you feel tired of your job. Maybe you feel tired of school. Maybe you are tired of your parents. Maybe you are tired of your kids. Maybe you are so tired. Tired. These days you even want to buy yourself a rim. Tired. But, but look at those words in Judges 8. The Bible says, exhausted, but still in pursuit. Exhausted, but still in pursuit. And what I hope I can show you this morning is that tiredness is a focus, but pursuit is a focus. Tiredness in itself is a focus, but pursuit is also a focus. That they were exhausted, but they chose not to focus on their exhaustion. But they said pursuit is a focus. I remember years ago that I was... One, one Sunday afternoon, I was really tired many years ago. I was really tired, but I had this senior family friend who was visiting, and she said that, oh, she had heard about the zoo in Ibadan, and she wanted to visit it and all of that, and I was just really tired, and she said, oh, it's been a long day. She came for a course, and she was also really tired, but that, let's just go, and, you know, I got bullied, I got coerced, and all of that, and then we went, and it was just, like, really tiring, because she was just talking so much about everything, about every animal, trying to take every picture with a giraffe. With I was just, like tired of her, tired of everything, tired of life, you know, of, 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 of everything, of everywhere, of everybody, of everything, you know, tired, you know, those moments where you just can't wait, have you been under the hot sun before that you are like, can my bed just come and meet me right here, you know, those kind of moments where it's like, I don't even have the strength to go to the car, I can't even, like, I'm just ty- tired, right, and I remember that day, we, she had checked all the animals, and she was also complaining that she was tired, and it had been a long day, but that she still wanted to see the lions, and I'm like, oh god, anyway, so we went down towards the lion cage, and I, I remember just being outside at the end, but the zookeepers were saying, oh, the lions were sleeping. But she said, let me just even see them. So she went towards them, was peeping and all of that. And you know, ah, the lions, ah, that's just that we're tired. We can't even wait and all of that. Then one of them just turned around. You know, like we were talking about, man, she was almost at the gate. Like, I don't know how far, like everybody who was around in that moment, the way people ran. And then suddenly I realized that Maybe many times we overestimate our tiredness and we underestimate our pursuit. Maybe many times we, we think too high of the focus of tiredness and we think too small of, of the... Maybe there's even more pursuit in you than you know. Maybe there's more pressing pursuit in you than you know. Maybe this morning you are talking a lot about being tired and I know it's a real human feeling. But what I'm really trying to say to you is that tiredness is a focus and that pursuit is also a focus. And this morning, I just want to say that we must not underestimate it, that we must focus on the things of our pursuit. Paul says these words in Philippians chapter 3 from verse 12. I love this in the Passion Translation. Paul says, I admit that I haven't yet acquired the absolute fullness that I am pursuing. This is a guy looking at his pursuit. He says, but I run with passion into his abundance so that I may reach the purpose that Jesus Christ has called me to fulfill and wants me to discover. I don't even know all of it yet, but there is a focus that I've set my mind on. There is a direction that I've set myself to that I'm pursuing. And he says, I don't depend on my own strength to accomplish this. However, I do have one compelling focus. I have one compelling focus. Paul, what's your focus? Are you focusing on how tired you are? Are you focusing on all the things people did against you? Are you focusing on the discouragement and all the people that walked away? Are you focusing on the heartbreak? Are you focusing on the letdown? Paul says, I have one compelling focus. I forget all of the past as I fasten my heart to the future instead. I run straight for the prize, for the divine invitation of reaching the heavenly goal. 
and gaining the victory prize through the anointing of Jesus. I love that. And I just want to say to you, friends, this morning, that vision must be a higher call over your life. That focusing on Jesus must be a higher call over your life. That you must learn what it means to run on and say that my pursuit is a focus. Maybe you're dealing with all these battles in your mind this morning. Maybe you're dealing with everything that the ox shit brings in your trough. Maybe you're dealing with all that the, the mess-ups of the oxen in your trough. But I just want to say this morning that the great increase is more than enough reason to press on one more day. It's more than enough reason to be pursuing again and this morning i want to encourage you and say run on run on and this is what i found that many times saying run on would mean that you are literally going to be walking and stepping on animal shit that as you deal with that trough and you say i know the trough is messed up but there's a pursuit in my heart i think literally you're going to be stepping on mess ups literally as you, you stretch out your heart to, to follow God's call, you're going to deal with heartbreak sometimes. You're literally going to step on mess-ups and disappointments and that's what it takes to be in the battle line. And sometimes we bleed in the battle line. But my encouragement this morning is run on the animal shit. I know it's messy, but run. But run because there is a victory. I know there was a heartbreak. I know there was loss because you didn't compromise. And maybe there's pressure to, about what it even means to hold integrity, to hold sexual values. Maybe there's pressure. Maybe it gets messy sometimes, holding out and standing strong. But my encouragement this morning is run, run, run. Run beyond distraction. Run, run, run beyond discouragement. Run beyond disconnection. Run beyond defeat. In Matthew chapter 13 and verse 44, the Bible says about this man that, that found treasure in a field. And the Bible says he saw treasure that was hidden in a field. Now, the Bible says because of the joy of the treasure, the man went and sold everything he had and he came to buy the field. When, when you read those words, you, you want to read it as he came to buy the treasure. And, and you want to read it as he sold what he had and he came and picked out the treasure from the building and bought it but the bible says no he bought the field he had to buy the whole field listen we buy a whole field the field contains treasure but we buy a whole field and in that field sometimes there are broken bottles and glasses and dirt and weeds and but there is treasure in that field and i just want to encourage you this morning i know that sometimes following jesus comes with with a sense of being overwhelmed and a sense of feeling the weight of these things but i'm saying there is treasure in that field and we choose to be people who buy the whole field we're not selling out we're not losing it we're not throwing it away but we would run even if it gets messy even if you step on animal shit i just want to say this morning run 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 again god is doing more than you know he is there is more in your future than in your past there is more promise than there is pain there is more possibilities than there is you know pain behind you there is more that god is doing ahead of you than what's behind you there is more promise run again run again lift up your height run again in the end of the day when this story is told i was thinking this morning and throwing back in history july 20 the second 1908 at the summer olympics the summer olympics in london a guy called reggie reggie walker won the 100 meters race in 1908 summer olympics that's over 100 years ago he won it mm. over 100 years ago what else do we know about the story nothing he won Reggie, were you probably tired? He won. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Did you have some difficulty in training and adjusting? He won. Did he have to cut on his diet and, you know, maybe not take some things he wanted to take? He won. He won. When this story is eventually told, I really don't care about the animal shit. I really don't care about all the messed up trough and all of that. When this story is eventually told, it will be a story of the increase of God's call upon your life. It will be a story of God fulfilling his purpose. It will be a story of God doing what only he can do. It will be a story of the victories that God brought you into. It will not be a story of your bleeding. It will be a story of victories upon victories. So you run, run again, run again. God is telling an amazing story and I'm believing Believing with all my heart, people, that God is doing more in the latter parts of this year. I'm believing with all my heart. Come on, team, let's worship. I'm believing with all my heart that we can lift up our eyes and believe that God has a purpose over our lives. We can lift up our eyes and believe that there are victories we're walking into. I'm believing with all my heart that we can lift up our eyes and believe that God is going to do more in what's remaining. God is going to do more. Let's run again. I know there's pressure. I know it looks like there's pain, but lift up your eyes today over discouragement, over distraction. Stay 
step over the animal shit and run, run, run again because there's a victory to win. There's a calling of God to come into. In the name of Jesus, and where you are, would you say amen? I hope this encourages you. Come on, let's just worship together. Let's encourage ourselves together. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, guys, let's worship. What you begun forever strong in you love your name is short and you fight for us all forever secure in you alone you fit you fit is what you take a moment to pray for you this morning people I don't know what season of life you are I don't know what's happening in your world but I want to pray for you I want to believe for you know God to be strengthening people I, I, I know this morning maybe maybe you're finding it tough maybe you, you feel like your hands are weary maybe you're finding the, this middle moment maybe you're finding it pressuring and overwhelming um, I, I, I like Exodus 70 where the Bible says that Moses is up lifting up his hands you know with real desire uh, and the Israelites are winning in battle but suddenly the Bible says in verse 12 that Moses hands became heavy maybe that's how you feel this morning in church but I believe that we can be an Aaron and a her for you this morning and then the Bible says these words that Moses hands became steady that's what I'm believing is going to happen for you this morning as we pray that God is going to give you steadiness where you are feeling heaviness that God is going to give you encouragement where you are feeling discouragement that God is going to give you strength to run where you were feeling like you were losing out Maybe you're in the middle of a struggle, of a battle. Maybe right now you know it. I'm really fighting this right now. And by the grace of God as a church community, we're just going to come in with you this morning and give you that extra push of grace this morning. There are people standing in front of lines. And as we pray this morning, I believe that God is just going to be propelling you over the lines. There are people right now that are needing to just break seasons, that are, you know, needing to just come into what only God can bring you into. And I'm believing this morning that as we pray, God is going to just bring you into that. In a very personal way in jesus name but just before i pray i want to make an invitation because there are people this morning that i believe i've linked into service and you can't personally say that you have a relationship with jesus you can't confidently say that you're a child of god maybe you're just living life for what it is tired just going around cycles but but this morning you want to be set right with god you want to know that my sins are forgiven you don't want to be living under the the bondage of guilt and of fear and just like the devil just oppressing your mind but you believe this morning that you can be set free you can be forgiven because there's a God who loves you and he proved his love once and for all in Jesus and so so this morning I want to pray for people I want to lead you in a prayer if you can't confidently say that I'm in the right place with God through Jesus this would be incredible to do with you this morning so if you say that's me you're speaking of me I want to I want to make it right with God maybe at some point you had made that choice but as we speak today you know you've walked away you're living far away from God and you want to be reconciled this is that moment he loves you and I'm so excited that you can make that choice this morning so wherever you are, you know what I want you to do? I just want to put your hand on your chest as a sign of surrender and of, of making a choice this morning. And let him see you. Do it deliberately. God sees you right where you are this morning. And as you do that, let's just say these words together as I lead you in a prayer. Say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father I, come to you today. I come to you 
because you've made a way for me to come through the death the burial and the resurrection of your son Jesus say I believe with all my heart that Jesus Christ is the son of God and he's the savior of the world say I believe he died and he was raised back to life so that I can be forgiven and I can have a life with you say today I confess Jesus as my savior and my Lord say please forgive me of the past and give me a whole new start I will live for you I will stand for you say fill me with your grace fill me with your spirit and I will never be the same in Jesus name amen now let me pray for you everybody everywhere and if you made that decision for Jesus this morning, that's incredible. We rejoice with you. We're so excited about it. Please let us know. There's all kinds of information about how you can let us know. Sycamore.church slash Jesus. Please let us know about your decision um, for Jesus this morning. But let's pray as a community of faith. Father, we just link in together this morning with everybody everywhere. Lord, in different phases of their journey, different seasons. And I know this word means different things to people. But God, I pray this morning that let it mean strength. Let it mean encouragement. Let it mean a lifting up of heads of the downcast. Let it mean grace oh God for everybody in different spheres of their journey but Lord let it mean a pressing on that there are people who feel exhausted but but that's not the end of the sentence let, let it come into but in pursuit God let them find one more step one more courage one more boldness Lord one more fight one more strength in their hearts this morning one more pursuit oh God to follow again and God I thank you because we're not going to fall out on your call or your purpose on our lives but Lord this latter half of the year is going to be one of great strength and great victories and in the name of Jesus, we believe this for us. And Lord God, as we engage these conversations in our life groups everywhere, and as we get talking in our communities, oh God, about practical applications of this, I pray that the Holy Spirit will be making it real and that we'll be strengthening each other in very personal ways. And we thank you for it, Father. Thank you for the great things you're doing in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. amen. Are you blessed? this morning i believe you are and i hope this has encouraged you this morning we're going to be out of here in just a moment um but it's just great stuff god is doing in church and um as we just close out this morning just a few things to um be reminding you about um first of all i was just going to remind you again that um sycamore worships new song furnace faith is going to be progressively released from today all kinds of different releases on different platforms but that's all starting out tonight and then you get all the information progressively of how it comes out but thanks guys for serving us and for all your sacrifice and we are grateful to every member of the team both those here and everywhere we love you guys thanks to every volunteer in our church we love you guys so much you are heroes and we are grateful for what god is doing thanks for everybody who serves behind the scenes and everywhere we are so grateful for the incredible people of our church people serving all around the world these days thank you we love you and we are grateful for you i'm talking about that if you're not in any of our live groups in church if you're not in um, any life group and you come around here maybe you're in service this morning and you say hey I, I thought that message was a blessing and it would be good for us to be talking around it and finding practical applications I would love to personally invite you to our chat rooms we have these zoom chat rooms where we just want to gather as a community of people and we can be talking about practical applications that's a lot of what we do in our life groups but we thought it would be great to serve people everywhere so wherever you are it really doesn't matter you can join in with us right after this service we need to spend out like some 20 30 minutes let's talk together let's be seeing how we can help ourselves and it doesn't matter who you are where you are we'll be so glad to hang out with you right after the service so there's all kinds of informations in the description um, uh, and on the comment sections wherever you're following service about how you can join into the chat room and the second group of people that i want to specially invite to the chat rooms this morning and it's all different sections in our chat room but the second group of people if you're new or visiting in our church we are so glad that you are here we're so glad and we'd love to meet you we'd love to know know you in a personal way and thanks to everybody um who invites people to church but we really want to welcome you and so if you're new or visiting or if you just joined in church recently or you know you you're in for the first time today hey let's meet you so why don't you come into our chat room and we'll just love to engage you and and meet with you personally and then the third group of people that i want to invite to the chat room this morning even a personal way you feel man i need somebody to be praying with me i need somebody to be standing with me and this is family come on we would love to do that we are so honored to do that people send in prayer requests all through the week and our team is always praying for people but maybe you feel i would like 
like to be one-on-one -on -one with a prayer minister this morning and have somebody just pray with me and you know just encourage with me this morning so you can also just come in the chat room and then we will just link you in for all of that ministry but we're so glad that we can have communities everywhere and everybody who is a member of a life group in church that's an incredible privilege and so just elijah wished he had a life group all right so you just lean into it and make your life group all the fun it can be but just that, let's encourage the conversations and be a part of all the exciting things that god is doing in church all right um if we can have the all-star revival prayer that would be incredible if we can just say it as we close out um but on thursday we're going to have um, a search prayer hangout and i want to specially invite everybody to that um so our search prayer hangout this thursday it'll be a great time as we continue to lean off these seven days of search we're on day five today and then um we have two more days and so let's just lean off it together round of search together and then get some time to pray um together around that thanks to everybody who was a part of passion night and who has been a part of all that's going on in church we are so glad to just keep encouraging ourselves and strengthen ourselves all right we're going to close out service um together this morning all right so if we can have our all-star of our prayer that would just be incredible so let's just i believe it's on your screen everywhere let's just say this together everybody i take god the father to be my god i take christ the son to be my savior I take, I take the, the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit to be my sanctifier. I, I take the, the Word of God to be my rule. I take the people of God to be my people. I dedicate my whole self to the Lord. And I do this deliberately and sincerely and freely and forever. Amen. Amen. All right, incredible. I'm sure you're set for a great week ahead, everybody. So the team is going to do the last song. And I hope this encourages you as we look to all that ahead, that every little thing is going to be all right. So where you are, would you lift up your hands for a blessing? this morning now may the lord bless you may the lord keep you cause his face to shine upon you may the lord be gracious to you and give you peace in all your ways i declare that this week you're going forward and upward in all god's plans for your life the latter half of the year will be the better half for you and god is going to do incredible things in your life you are kept by the power of god and his hand is upon you for great things big victories are yours in the name of jesus the christ the son of the living god everybody said amen amen we love you church have a great week My dreams are small compared to yours Why should I worry about tomorrow When I know that all I gotta do is trust you, Lord If you believe it, let me hear you say, yeah Every little thing 
church. See you next week.